getting cheated on by your husband doesn't put murder up for debate. <laughs> If this was a man running over a woman, it wouldn't be on Larry King every night. Although, candidly, if there had been a man at the wheel, it wouldn't have taken three tries to get the job done. Kobe Bryant. Uh, it's on the news today that he bought his wife a $4 million gift to say, sorry, honey. Um, now, I know we live in a material... That's what money's for, Dan. I, I tell you. <laughs> I know, I know we live in a materialistic society, but I am amazed at how fast the jewelry companies oh, you have jumped right. on this. Play this. This is a commercial I saw today on the air. This is amazing. It's the off season, and romance is in the air. And nothing says, sorry, I fucked the concierge, quite like a diamond, from Debray's. Debray's. Getting the bitch off your back since 1879. But uh, what do you think? Four million dollars? Is that about right for an indiscretion? Let me tell you something, man. Some people buy roses and other people buy diamonds. It's the deal. But, uh, but doesn't I... that make the woman a whore? Which one? Well, you... The wife. The wife. I mean, if she accepts money... Hey, Bill, I can't be on this show with you calling women whores, man. No, I'm just saying, if you accept that, if it's like, well, you cannot fool around in me. All right, $4 million, you can. Right. Then I you mean, can do it two more times. Let me look. A yeah, lot if you bought me a purple yeah. diamond, we might have to talk. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> look, there's a lot of women, a lot of women who are married to a lot of cheating men who didn't even get that. So, you know. New rule. Your daughter's a whore. But the hypocrisy about this one that bothers me is that they have d divided the contestants into a man's team and a woman's team. Mm -hmm. And the women win every time, and they're like, well, the women are smarter and better at business. No, the women are winning every time because they're playing the pussy card. Excuse me. That's true. It is true. Okay. I just wanted to say that. No, it's, That's it's right. true. They're winning by sex. Not the, 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 the thing is, this is a reality show. It's not reality. <laughs> have, have you noticed that all of these women is about as big around as my little finger? Yes, they look like they should be on America's Next Top Model. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're, I mean, walk into a typical, you know, merger and acquisition firm, and I don't think the chicks are going to look yeah. like that. This you is know? the point of what the president right. should have said in the State of the Union, that the right. women aren't skinny exactly. enough. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> the problem is more a gender gap in in the in the poor world there are not enough marriageable men that's the problem you can encourage them all the way you think women don't want to get married women always want to get married <laughs> the, the difference is that now that they can earn a living for their own bad selves but when before they had to depend on a man they won't marry just any ne'er-do-well loser that's the difference they don't have to get married if it's some asshole just going to sit in front of the TV they're not going to hey, marry hey, that hey, guy hey. <laughs> but crying during your speech I mean come on there's no crying in politics it's not fair that's a trick chicks use how are we supposed to discuss this rationally if you're going to cry <laughs> And boy, what a difference a few months back. We went out, uh, out of business a few months ago. And uh, boy, in that time, we have a new Secretary of State. We have democracy in Iraq. And the uh, desperate housewives have replaced the Sex and the City girls <laughs> as America's lovable sluts. It's... <laughs> this luncheon, when he said it, there was an MIT biologist named Nancy Hopkins there right. who left the room. She said she felt physically ill. She said she had to leave because she was too upset to stay. She said, I would have either blacked out or thrown up. So in other words, she acted like a girl. Excuse me, but she's objecting to the stereotype of women by running out of the room screaming to go eat a pint of haagen -Dazs. I just think it's kind of funny. Okay. People magazine every year puts out their 50 most beautiful issue, right? And they plainly mean physical beauty, because 49 out of the 50 people are just physically beautiful, the usual suspects. And then right in the middle, there's somebody like 100 years old. <laughs> and to me, this is a, a safety issue. This, I'm thinking about kids. There are 13-year-old boys using this to jerk off. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this poor kid coming around the corner from...
Pamela Anderson and Selma Hyatt. Jessica Tandy, oh my God. You know, it's, it's not fair for the children, ladies and gentlemen. It's the kids that I'm thinking about. Plus, I mean, the, real, the reality is men and women are perceived differently with age. That's the way it is. We didn't make it that way. Older men are, for some reason, yes, still more attractive than older women. And it wouldn't be that way if you still didn't want to fuck Sean Connery, so shut up. <laughs> and then you blame us, you know? Mick Jagger has a Peter Pan complex. Mick Jagger, he can't grow up. Yeah, he can't grow up because hot chicks still fuck him. That's why. <laughs> Mick Jagger fucks young girls for a reason. He can. <laughs> Believe me, plumbers his age would do the same thing if they could. Men are only as loyal as their options. <laughs> I mean, Viagra is not natural. When you're 75, <laughs> you're supposed to be thinking about God because you're going to meet him soon and not <laughs> about shagging a bag of bones in the next room. I mean... <laughs> Oh, ladies can't be liking Viagra. They don't want to get fucked. It's got to hurt. Standing up hurts for crying out loud at that age. How about following nature? You know, menopause. It's right in the word. Men on pause. We never asked for it. I remember. I remember when Twiggy came on the scene. Who's my age? You remember Twiggy? Really? Okay, well, if you don't know, in the late 60s, when all the wrong women were burning their bras, uh, <laughs> and uh, I was uh, 12, 13, I was just coming into my own, frequently. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm telling you, the girls in Playboy in 1967 were not thin. It was Sophia Loren. She was not thin. Marilyn Monroe, they were all 260, 270. <laughs> Jane Mansfield, these pie wagons. I mean, you could serve drinks on their ass, but... But, you know, we were fine with that. You know, we never asked for a change. We didn't ask for Twiggy. Twiggy came out. We thought she was a skinny, ugly chick. But, you know, we're, we're men. We were like, if this is what they're giving us to fuck, then... <laughs> I guess that's what we'll be fucking. I mean, we don't want to, but this is what they're giving us now, and... That's why I love rap music. Rap music is the first music to be honest about the male agenda. It's not a lot of bullshit about, you know, I will be with you on a mountaintop. It's back that ass up, you know? It's... <laughs> you gotta admire the honesty. Because pop music had no honesty. For decades, male singers got up there and sang, you know, cherish is the word, and you are my special lady, you're three times a lady, you're my everything, you Shining Star, by Endless Love, by Special Angel. Five minutes after they're off stage, they're knee deep in a pile of groupies. So, you know, how much can that really... <laughs> to all the girls I've loved before. Remember that one? They're telling you, you're disposable road trash and you're swooning. <laughs> Women cannot complain anymore about men until they start showing better taste in them. <laughs> the problem in movies is not violence, it's romance. I'm not kidding. Because what's every movie with the romantic plot? Guy meets a girl, she hates him. <laughs> but he's gonna get her no matter what. Well, in real life, that's called stalking. You know, it's... <laughs> and it doesn't work. If somebody hates you right away, they're probably gonna hate you, you know? I mean, don't try in real life the old, you know, interrupt the wedding. <laughs> There's a lot of that. Hi! <laughs> I'm that crazy kooky guy you had all the adventures with. You really want to marry me? No, security, you know, it's like, I'm getting married now. This is about money. Bye. <laughs> Bye, crazy adventure guy. You know. When I say this is a feminized country, first of all, understand that I get it that there are millions and millions of women who are steely-eyed realists and millions and millions of men who are anything but. However, for lack of a better term, I would say that the feminine values are now the values of America. Sensitivity is more important than truth. Feelings are more important than facts. Commitment is more important than individuality. Children are more important than people. Safety is more important than fun. See, this is very personal to me because I'm like the last of my guy friends to have never gotten married, and their wives, they don't want them playing with me. You know, I, 
I'm like the escaped slave. I bring news of freedom. You know, it's, <laughs> it's not a good thing to have me around, you know. Keep the husbands in the dark. They're happier that way. <laughs> I understand that women suffer, but I don't think it's as much publicized that a lot of men in America are living lives of quiet desperation, <laughs> lobotomized of their libido, anesthetizing themselves with sports and pornography, and living in an Orwellian world where we have to pretend to concur with the woman's point of view. On any TV show in America, if somebody got up there and said, you know, women are smarter than men, automatic round of applause. If somebody said men are smarter than women, you'd be booed off the stage. I mean, what does that tell you about our culture that we have to pretend that one sex is smarter than the other? Women are smarter than men. If women ran the world, there'd be no wars. Being pregnant is sexy. You know, just a whole roster of things that we don't really believe, but we pretend to believe because it's easier to make women nod than to live in the doghouse. And by the way, the male impetus to spread our seed is why we are a successful species. That is why we're sitting here right now. But do we get thanks for it? No, we get impeached. <laughs> hey, you know what? That whole election was a feminized issue because that 2000 election was all about the Republican marketing machine. They were able to morph monogamy into integrity, the way, same way they morphed Bin Laden into Hussein. 45% of Republicans think Obama is probably not a real American because he, quote, feels foreign. <laughs> feels foreign. Well, you know what? To me, John Boehner feels female. <laughs> he does. He, <laughs> he wears a lot of bronzer, I, you know. Uh, he gets teary over nothing. I'm always like, this guy is tanned, rested, and hormonal for crying out loud. <laughs> there was a Republican congressman from Missouri who said that fetuses masturbate in the womb. I could not make, I know. You, you thought that was the baby kicking. I mean, why would you even say that? Why, of course, because they're all abortion nuts. That's why they're always trying to prove that science knows that life begins earlier and earlier. How can you kill that kid? He's having a great time in there. He's whacking and he's watching videos. Oh yes, the one branch of science they believe in. Sorry, global warming. If only you were caused by sluts fucking, we could do something about you. <laughs> it's always about sluts fucking. I'm telling you, these people never got over the sexual revolution. Fuck, they never got over the Civil War. What am I talking about? <laughs> New rule, <laughs> if this device tracks my every move down to the second, but it still won't let me talk, <laughs> it's not a phone, it's a woman. <laughs> Kidding. That Halloween is an excuse for women to dress up slutty. Uh, it, it really is. Or, or as it's known here in Hollywood, every day of the year. <laughs> no, Hillary said Elizabeth Warren would be great. She would bolster the idea that women are ready to take over the world and are totally capable of being so, doing so. And also, I'd have someone to go to the bathroom with. You know, I... I, <laughs> I, I kid. Oh, stop. <laughs>